In 2021, the leaders of the US, UK and Australia announced the signing of a special security pact. AUKUS immediately became a sensation, declared almost the Pacific equivalent of NATO. And among the many nuances of the pact, there is a particularly interesting one. The three countries in the near future will have to expand the capabilities of their navies, and one of them, Australia, will update the fleet of submarines, which is now represented by the Collins class. And this is not just an update. The quite good diesel-electric boats will give way to the latest and extremely formidable nuclear predators. To understand what a huge leap this is and why it causes so much controversy, we need to figure out what this replacement is. Today on the horizon is the Virginia class. The success story of the Virginia class began with the history of, if not a failure, then a highly controversial achievement of its brother. In 1995, the US Navy adopted the SSN-21 Seawolf. New multi-purpose submarines, the creation of which began in the 1980s, were supposed to replace the Los Angeles class and neutralize the threat of new Soviet boats. The project was extremely ambitious. The Seawolf was incredibly technologically advanced and equipped with the most advanced solutions that the US military had at its disposal. But all this incredible coolness became a problem. The Seawolf turned out to be terribly complicated and expensive. More than $3 billion per unit in the early 1990s is too much, even for the Pentagon. As a result, the epic plan to deliver 26 boats ended with a limited batch of only three. Concentrating on the maximum capabilities of weapons was a mistake that was recognized even before this moment. In the early 1990s, the Centurion, or new SSN program was initiated, and it had to result in the creation of a new nuclear submarine, which was supposed to be a compromise between the advanced capabilities of the Seawolf and their adequate cost. Cost reduction was the most important point. The share of new technologies was increased significantly. It was about the first nuclear sub designed on a computer. Modular assembly began to be used in production, and a significant part of the components were purchased on the commercial, off-the-shelf market, and not specially created, which was long and expensive. Most of the systems were created according to the concept of open system architecture, and the product lifecycle support system was seriously revised. The operation and modernization of boats should not be too costly. The Newport News Shipbuilding and General Dynamics Electric Board Shipyards took over the construction, sharing the responsibility for the creation of individual elements and their final assembly. The lead boat, SSN 774 Virginia, was launched in 2003 and gave its name to the entire class. Virginia is a multi-purpose nuclear submarine capable of attacking sea and land targets. The class is constantly evolving, boats are produced in series, each of which is superior to the previous one. At the moment, there are five such series, and while the first Block 1 can be considered a base, by the Block 4 version it has undergone significant improvements, and in the Block 5 version it received a completely new section, becoming longer and heavier. The length of the boats in early modifications is 377 feet. Block 5 meanwhile reached 460 feet. The displacement, respectively, is 7,900 tons for the basic version and 10,200 tons for the Block 5. The overall layout is classic, a hydroacoustic complex in the nose followed by a compartment with missile launchers, followed by a command compartment, a torpedo compartment, a sail above. Behind them is a large section with living quarters and auxiliary equipment, and next, the heart of the boat, is a nuclear reactor. The journey ends with the engine room and the propulsion unit, near which the rudders and a pair of additional inclined stabilizers stand in a cross. Standard boat crew, 134 people. The design allows diving to depth of up to 800 feet, with a theoretical limit of 1600 feet. The boat has a built-in diving chamber that can accommodate up to 9 people, as well as a ducking port for a small ASDS, Advanced Seal Delivery System submarine, which is used by the Navy Special Forces and Special Operations Command. Modern multi-purpose boats can no longer do without such additions. 
The heart of the Virginia power plant is the S9G nuclear reactor, which approximately stands for Submarine Platform, the 9th Generation Core, and General Electric, which is the reactor's creator. Power, 210 megawatts of energy, through two turbines is transmitted to a pump jet propulsor, the brainchild of BAE systems, similar to propulsors of nuclear submarines of the Trafalgar and the Stude classes of the United Kingdom's Royal Navy. This whole system, according to various sources, is capable of accelerating the boat to speeds of 25 to 35 knots. Virginia, being one of the most modern boats in the US Navy, was given the best equipment, considering the adequate cost of course. Part of the control system is electric, with a fiber optic network. The boat is equipped with sonars for various purposes and other systems, led by the large BQQ-10 Spherical Sonar Array. An innovation for submarines, instead of classic periscopes, multifunctional masts equipped with various electronic and optical surveillance sensors. The main task of the Virginia boats is to hunt ships and submarines, they are the so-called hunter-killers, as well as delivering high-precision strikes against ground targets. To solve these tasks, the boats are equipped with four torpedo tubes, as well as missile launchers. This part is interesting. Initially, on the Virginia versions of Block 1 and Block 2, conventional vertical launch systems were placed in the bow, 12 individual cells. Starting with the Block 3 version, they were replaced with the so-called Virginia Payload Tubes, or VPT, revolver-type multi-purpose launchers which can fit six missiles and are hidden under one large cover. On the Block 5 version, the picture became even more interesting. By significantly lengthening the hull, the boat received a hefty section, inside of which were placed four VPM, Virginia Payload Module Blocks, similar to VPT but slightly larger and already containing seven missiles. The idea of replacing conventional vertical launchers with these seems strange. It complicates the design and increases the cost of boats. However, if you dig deeper, you can find out that VPM analogs were originally created for Ohio boats, in order to place Tomahawk missiles in cells originally created for ballistic Trident missiles. The question arises, if ballistic missiles were replaced by cruise missiles in Ohio, then since the launchers are similar, is it possible to replace Virginia's cruise missiles with ballistic ones? Yes, there are fewer launchers there, but given the number of boats themselves, this can seriously affect the strategic balance. So, what kind of weapons can be placed here? Torpedo tubes can be used to launch Mark 48 torpedoes, as well as the UGM-84 Harpoon anti-ship missiles. The stock of weapons in a torpedo compartment allows for the placement of up to 25 torpedoes and missiles. Plus, the harpoons can be fired from vertical launchers, so in the Block 1 to Block 4 versions of the boats, the amount of missiles can be increased by another 12. The appearance of VPM blocks on the boats of the Block 5 version means that the number of harpoons can be increased by another 28 units, but such a number of anti-ship missiles for one boat is probably too much. These cells are for other arrows. Virginia's main long-range weapon is the BGM-109 cruise missiles, the good old Tomahawks. They can be placed in any vertical launcher, so 12 missiles in the nose for blocks 1 to 4 and another 28 in the 5th, meaning that block 5 is capable of carrying up to 40 Tomahawks. Not the Ohio or RLA Burke of course, but also impressive. The supply plans assume that the fleet will receive two boats per year, this pace was not reached immediately, but now the figure is already relevant. There are 21 submarines in service in the Navy, and the overall plan is to receive more than 60 units, which will be produced until the 2040s, completely replace the departing Los Angeles-class submarines in the fleet, and continuing to develop will become the mainstay of the fleet in this class until the 2070s. Naturally, the class will be developing all this time, and while the original Virginia involves the appearance of Block 6 and Block 7 versions, further development allows the creation of a practically new boat, which so far carries the SSN X index. For now, there is little information about this project, but some of its prospects can be assessed by returning to the AUKUS Pact. 
The fact is that the plan for development of the fleets of this pact involves the creation of a new nuclear submarine, which received the appropriate name, Submergible Ship Nuclear Replacement (SSNR), or more popularly SSN AUKUS. In theory, it will have to replace the British Astute class boats and the Australian Collins class boats. Despite the fact that the project was officially initiated by London and Canberra, it would be logical to assume that Washington will take a direct part in it. No one will be surprised if SSNX and SSN AUKUS at some point merge into one program. The problem for Australia is that Collins should be retired by the early 2030s, and the SSN AUKUS will appear at best in the 2040s. It was decided to close this temporary gap by purchasing an interim solution. Given the availability, the existence of production, as well as the technical proximity to future boats, Virginia seems like a logical acquisition from this perspective. The Royal Australian Navy plans to purchase three submarines, with the potential to take on two more. The debate here is that Australia, not being a nuclear power, will not only receive modern nuclear submarines, but also participating in the AUKUS project will receive a large amount of nuclear technology, which may in places be a violation of the Non-Proliferation Treaty. In addition, the already noted potential possibility of deploying ballistic missiles on boats remains. With the growing military tension in the region, someone may want to make the Australian Navy the owner of albeit limited, but ballistic missile submarines (SSBNs), and this is a situation for a completely different level. Let's hope that AUKUS becomes just another big bureaucratic machine that never has to live up to its weapons potential. And that concludes our story for today. Subscribe to the channel so as not to miss new videos. There's still a lot of interesting things on the horizon.